Hello and welcome to Med4 Care. Today's topic is general anesthesia. Let's find out together what it is. By the term general anesthesia, we mean that anesthesiological procedure that allows you to fall asleep in view of surgery. Let's find out more about how it works. During general anesthesia, the subject is in a state of unconsciousness and feels no pain. The anesthetist is responsible for completely or partially replacing those vital functions that have been abolished, with the help of artificial systems, such as an artificial respiration machine or drugs for the support of the circulatory system. In practice, the anesthetist performs a kind of reanimation of the patient under anesthesia. As long as it is necessary to perform surgery, Anesthesia must be continuously adapted to the condition of the subject and the operation. It is an extremely complex activity, which is adapted to the patient and his specific condition. Three principles for general anesthesia. Hypnosis. Analgesic. Neuromuscular blocking. Sleep induced by general anesthesia is generally profound. It is an artificial sleep, with different modes than common sleep. The depth of sleep induced by the anesthetist may vary from awakening to deep coma. How should the depth of general anesthesia be controlled? To perform this control, equipment is used that performs monitoring through the electrodes, as is the case in the electroencephalogram. An algorithm then processes the signals and provides a good index of the depth of anesthesia. Sleep induction is obtained with anesthetics like propofol benzodiazepine, midazolam or diazepam, barbiturates, sodium thiopental, etomidate, for the maintenance of general anesthesia are used instead, halogenated anesthetics, a kind of anesthetic gases that are breathed by the patient through the anesthesia machine, intravenous anesthesia, or TIVA, with the use of propofol in continuous infusion. Other drugs in continuous infusion, such as lidocaine, clonidine, or other adjuvants, are more rarely used. Analgesia. During general anesthesia, no pain should occur. Opiates are among the most powerful analgesic drugs used for this purpose. They are administered intravenously and among the most used we find. Fentanyl, for repeated intravenous administration. Sufentanil, in continuous infusion or repeated intravenous administration. Alfentanil, in continuous infusion or repeated intravenous administration. Remifentanil, infusion continues. Morphine, repeated intravenous administration. Ketamine, repeated intravenous or continuous infusion. Besides opiates, different analgesics are used as well. These drugs have direct analgesic action, or are effective in reducing pain in combination with other analgesic drugs, and perform a function called adjuvant. Recall in this context. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, or NSAIDs, steroids and other adjuvants, such as butyrophenes, like haloperidol, droperidol, and clonidine. Neuromuscular blocking. Neuromuscular blocking consists of the reduction of the tone, or tension, of the bodily musculature. It can be complete, with the total abolition of muscle tone, or partial, with a reduction in muscle tone. Complete paralysis is necessary in order to completely abolish the automatic and sudden, voluntary, and involuntary bodily movements that could hinder the surgeon in his action or endanger the life of the patient. In these cases, it is essential that the muscle paralysis is complete and every single movement is prevented. Complete paralysis of the musculature involves the blocking of the voluntary or striated musculature. It includes all the muscles of movement but also the diaphragm that allows us to breathe, which is a semi-voluntary muscle. Instead, the function of the intestinal muscles, the vessels, and the heart is left unchanged, which can continue to beat freely, because it is a special muscle. We are now at the end of today's video, we hope you enjoyed it. If you found it useful, please support us with a nice like and subscribe to the channel. See you soon on Med4Care.